A version control system is basically a database for keeping a sequence of different versions of either a single file or a group of files or an entire directory tree in a database. Um, the reason you want to use a version control system becomes quickly obvious when you look into the working directory of people who are unfamiliar with version control systems. They quickly create a huge mess of lots of little uh, copies of their working directory where you see dissertation, dissertation backup, dissertation backup last week, dissertation backup 15th of May. When you find people having uh, files with dates as extensions, that's usually a sign that you should introduce them to the world of version control systems because then you just have one single file, the file that you're working on, plus you have in the database the entire history whenever you decided to make a snapshot of your file and you have tools to, for example, show the diffs between different versions. You can also uh, build version trees where versions branch apart and are later merged together again and so on. The simplest of the commonly used version control system that we talk about in uh, this video is known as RCS, the uh, revision control system which uh, came about in the late 1980s and it keeps only a track of one single file. So for each work working file, for example, let's call the file example, <clears throat> the RCS system will uh, maintain a database file that has the same name with just comma v attached. So you have example and then example comma v is where all the previous uh, revisions of that file are archived in a single file. If you don't want to clutter your working directory with all these comma v files, you can just create a subdirectory uh, uppercase rcs and then the rcs system will automatically move all these comma v files in there and then they are a bit out of the way. And there is <coughs> two main commands for using uh, RCS and they are known as CI and CO for check in and check out. And check in basically moves information about your current working file into the database and check out gets a, a version of the file from the database back out into your working directory. Let's look at a simple example. So as before, I have a file and before I start making any modifications, I first want to make a backup copy. So I have a snapshot of what I started with. But stop, don't use the copy command. Instead, what we do is we write a check in example.txt and now it tells us I'm about to move example.txt into this database, but it wants a description uh, for the database. So you can attach a little bit of um, metadata, just an example, and then uh, with either control D for at the end of file or a single dot, you can finish this. We will now see that the original file has actually uh, disappeared and we can get it out again uh, with a check out example, either example.txt, v or just the, the file name on, on its own. And now if I do an ls minus l, you can see we have uh, two files, namely the database file and the working file. But you will notice that the working file is at the moment a read-only file. Uh, RCS was actually designed uh, to allow multiple people to collaborate uh, by means of locking. So only one person at a time can have a writable file, but multiple people can have a read-only file. So if we want to actually obtain a write lock, instead we write check out minus L. We want to have a locked version of example.txt. And now we have version 1.1 and this is a locked version which has been locked 
or us. So you now can see our working file is writable and we can go in and we can edit, for example, add again this bug about the missing verb here. And now we can find out what have we changed. And it's always good practice before you send back a change into the database and therefore make it possibly visible to others to first check are there not any accidental edits in there. And there's a version of the uh, diff command called rcs diff example.txt and you can see this is the old add format uh, where the less or no this is a a version of the add format where the uh, the less than sign here indicates that this is a line that has been removed and this greater than sign indicates this is a line that has been inserted. But you can also use minus u to get a unified diff or again we can pass this through color diff to make it a little bit more colorful. Um, <clears throat> so we have now reviewed our text and we can our change and we now can check it in. And for that, I again call the check in command example.txt. But this time, I actually want to keep an unlocked uh, copy of the working file. Uh, so I can either say check in minus L, I keep a locked copy because I want to continue working on it. Or I can say I want to keep an unlocked version then other people can continue writing to it, but I still have a read-only couple. Added a verb. And now again, I still have the uh, read-only version here and therefore other people can see that they can now take over and uh, both the original version and the new version are stored in this file. We can use the rlog command to look at a revision history. Uh, we had an initial revision. Um, this is the description that we entered and you can see both the initial revision has a, a date when it was checked in, an author, um, and a version number. So should I want to retrieve an old version? At the moment I have example.txt. Um, at the moment I have version 1.1, but I can anytime check out, for example, minus r 1.1 example.txt. And now I have access to the old version, whereas in the checkout command, if I don't specify a version, then I get the latest version. And of course, I can again ask for a locked version, make another choice. Uh, and do another check in. And so we're gradually building up a version control history and I can uh, check with RCS diff each time before I make a change uh, what I am about to change and I can find out later who did what. So you will find in the slides a couple of notes about how you can use RCS in a team. Namely, you keep all the comma v files in a shared repository directory that's writable to everyone. And then team members will have their own respective working directories each of which has a symbolic link called RCS to that uh, shared directory. And as long as uh, nobody touches the database file or 
manually changes write permissions on working files. The system ensures that only one team member at a time can edit a file and old versions are never lost. So it gives you a lot of added uh, security and uh, prevention of accidents. Um, <clears throat> RCS remains very useful, I think, for maintaining the history of single files. So I use still RCS very frequently. If I go into a server, for example, that has a configuration file, I want to make a change to the configuration file. The very first thing I will do is I will check the configuration file into RCS by just typing CI minus L and the name of the configuration file. I don't have to worry about thinking up a name for a backup file and another one for the next change and so on. RCS will uh, take care of all of this. However, if you work in a distributed team on a project with many files, with subdirectories, if you need remote uh, access, if you want to be able to rename files and that renaming of files also show up as a change in the version history, or if you simply hate locks, if you find that um, quite often you can't make progress with your work because someone else has locked the file in RCS, therefore you still have to make a local copy with a different name where you do your work and then you have to wait until the rock is released by the other person and then you have to move your uh, renamed file back into the original file, uh, then you probably want to use uh, one of the newer types of version control system, namely subversion or git that provide a more convenient solution here. <clears throat>